Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm Congressman Mike Thompson from California's 5th Congressional District, and, and I served as a staff sergeant with the 173rd Airborne uh, Brigade uh, in Vietnam. I'm uh, honored and proud to be standing with a group of colleagues who are also veterans, uh, Peter DeFazio, United States Air Force, Ruben Gallegos, the uh, United States Marine Corps, Ted Liu, United States Air Force, Anthony Brown, United States Army, and Jimmy Panetta, United States Navy. As veterans, we're here today to express our concern about the President's behavior at Monday's summit in uh, Helsinki. By stating that Putin was not responsible for interference in the 2016 elections and in belittling our intelligence community, this president abandoned the values that we all fought to protect. I also served in the House uh, Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence uh, for my full eight-year term. And I know from firsthand experience that the men and women in our intelligence community are some of the most professional and some of the most dedicated public servants that we have the honor of working with. The President also belittles the service of our veterans who put their lives on the line to protect our values and our freedoms as Americans. This President's walk back uh, is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm sure you've all, all seen that. Uh, it does not undo the damage that he's done on the world stage. And uh, now he's claiming that uh, Putin it isn't messing with our midterm elections. And again, that's throwing our intelligence community uh, under the proverbial uh, bus. And he may say all day that he's the toughest president on Russia, uh, but it's as uh, meaningless as everything else he's said in, in, in this context. It was not uh, this president who said, tear down that wall. It was not this president who stopped the, uh, the missiles from being uh, uh, placed in, in, in Cuba. Uh, he knows no history, and uh, he knows not what he says, and it's putting us all in a real bad position. He had a chance to stand up to Putin, and he failed miserably. He must now stand up. He must denounce Putin and do so in no uncertain terms. He also needs to clearly articulate that he knows Russia deliberately interfered in our elections and issue his uh, support, his strong support for our intelligence uh, community. Putin is not our friend. Russia is not our ally. And it's time for this president to accept that and to demand that our American values uh, and, and uh, our, our uh, American, uh, Americans who fight for those values get the recognition that they uh, deserve. Now, it's my honor to turn the podium over uh, to Congressman DeFazio from Oregon. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks for uh, organizing this. Uh, there's probably a couple of explanations. One would be uh, that the, some Republicans are peddling is it's his acute narcissism, uh, that he can't stand the idea uh, that Russia interfered in the election. Therefore, the implication is that that somehow uh, helped him to become president of the United States, although Putin said he did clearly uh, prefer uh, Donald Trump to uh, Hillary Clinton. So that's one explanation. The other explanation would be much, much darker, uh, and we don't know exactly what that is. Uh, there's been talk of compromise, uh, or is he just, uh, you know, just a blissful idiot uh, who thinks that he can sit down with a professional spy, a, a you know, a high-ranking KGB agent, now essentially dictator of Russia, and take him at his word. What did they talk about for two hours? That's something the American people need to know. In addition to the points Mike made, we must know what deals he made or offered to Putin. The Russians seem to have a list. We don't. There was no one in that room, no witness, no note taker, only two translators. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we have a number of action items here. And for the Republicans to continue to deny that this co-equal branch of government needs to take steps to hold hearings and, and bring people in, make them accountable, and find out what deals are in the works with the Russians, what, what has the president transmitted to his senior aides, uh, and uh, also uh, to bring in the intelligence people once again, to have them state yet again, unequivocally, that the Russians are continuing to interfere in our elections. They interfered in our elections, and, you know, that is a minimal step 
that the Republicans, if they're not going to be total lapdogs, should take. I mean, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee should be dismissed by Speaker Ryan if Speaker Ryan meant his little bit of criticism that he leveled at the president for this outrageous action. Uh, with that, uh, I want to recognize Ruben Gallego. There you are over there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mike. Uh, on Monday, President Trump embarrassed himself, abandoning the American people, and hung our service members out to dry. He also denigrated the service of hundreds of thousands of veterans who have served ably and honorably on NATO missions from the Inner German Corridor to Kandahar, some that I served with also in Iraq. As a combat veteran myself, it makes me sick to see this president disregard their service to our nation and our alliances. When President Trump met with Putin, he was playing with young service members' lives. That is a responsibility that he cannot take lightly. And yet, what did he do? He didn't prepare. He didn't allow himself to be played. And he did not prepare, and he allowed himself to be played by an expert spy and someone who is a master manipulator. In meeting with Trump and cozying up to Russia, President Trump is driving away our allies, meaning that in the future, we may have to fight more wars and more wars by ourselves. That means more American veterans for wars we could have avoided. More, American, more Americans wounded mentally and physically by an unnecessary combat, all because Trump has a pattern of kowtowing to strongmen and dictators, especially people like President Putin. And what do we get in return? For less security than we have now, and we have had over the last 70 years, especially considering we are the founding members of NATO. Veterans know how it, what it feels like to serve. We also know how to sacrifice. We have trained for hours, thousands of hours, given time away from our families, from even just regular life. We risked our safety and our very lives for other people's security and this nation's security. I unfortunately have many friends have died on the battlefield and those that also died here uh, uh, from wounds, both mentally and physically. They do not deserve to have a president like this. They do not deserve a president to let them down and ban them uh, whether it's because of his ego or because he's been compromised one way or the other. Trump is a man that has never risked anything for anyone but himself. I'm proud here to stand as a veteran. My service drives me to continue to work to ensure that the sacrifices that our, that our veterans have done are not forgotten, especially when we have somebody like this president uh, who is more interested in taking care of his selfish needs instead of creating and protecting this country. With that, it's my pleasure to pass this off to my comrades, since that's what we have to call each other nowadays, uh, Ted Lieu. <laughs> Thank you, Ruben. Uh, I served on active duty in the U.S. military, and I never imagined that I would see the U.S. Commander-in-Chief go on to foreign soil and deliver the talking points of the Kremlin. So look, we're Republicans and Democrats, independents in America. We can disagree on issues like tax care, our, our, tax policy and health care uh, and Social Security and so on. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. So it is very jarring uh, to see the American president stand next to Vladimir Putin, who is not our friend, and say what he said. He basically threw America under the bus. He trusted a former KGB official uh, over our American intelligence professionals. And even today, he still continues to disregard the assessment of our intelligence community, including his own director of national intelligence, Dan Goetz, who said that Russia is engaging in an ongoing pervasive effort to undermine democracy in the United States. And today the president said that no, uh, Russia is not uh, trying to meddle in our elections. So we've got to do a number of things. Uh, first of all, I call on Republicans to uh, subpoena the translator. We need to know what was said in that private meeting between Putin and Trump. We also need Speaker Ryan to allow votes to happen on legislation to protect Robert Mueller. And then we need to have election bills passed that protect election security. Because what the president did has now invited Putin to once again order the Russian military to attack us today as they did in 2016. And this is really an issue that is uh, not partisan. It should be fundamental to us as Americans. We have our own elections. We should not have influence uh, by a foreign country, and that's why you see veterans here, because at the end of the day, we're trying to fight for our values and for the democracy that makes America great. And all of us here, uh, before we became members of Congress, when we entered the military, there was one thing we all had to do, and that was to take an oath to the United States Constitution. Pretty clear our president does not seem to be living up uh, to that oath. It's incumbent on Congress now to make sure we all live up to that oath. And with that, uh, I... Uh, have uh, Anthony Brown uh, with the U.S. Army.
Thanks, okay. uh, Ted. Yep, thank you very much, Ted. I want to thank my uh, colleagues uh, here this afternoon, uh, not only for your uh, prior service uh, in uniform, but today your service to our country uh, in Congress. Uh, President Trump had one straightforward mission to accomplish in Helsinki and last week uh, in uh, Europe, uh, and that was to stand with our NATO allies and European partners and to stand up to Putin and Russia. And he failed. He squandered uh, U.S. influence and abdicated uh, our leadership. Uh, he fawned over a tyrant who actively seeks to undermine our relationship with our European partners. As is clearly stated in the president's own national security strategy, national defense strategy, uh, we are in a great power competition. Russia is our competitor. They are a foe. They are not a friend. The problem is, uh, is that Putin doesn't compete by the rules. He doesn't play by the rules. He annexes uh, territory, uh, land uh, in Europe uh, by military force. Uh, he uh, illegally, criminally hacked into our 200, 2016 elections, uh, and there's no indication that he will not attempt to do that this year in our midterm elections. Cyber attacks uh, in the Baltics, uh, support of a barbaric uh, regime in Syria, and the list goes on. Uh, while Putin is engaged in this activity, uh, President Trump continues to criticize NATO and raise doubts about whether we will come to the defense. Uh, of our allies uh, in Europe. Uh, he uh, toys around with the idea that if they're not paying enough, uh, we may not come to their defense. He ignores two basic facts. One is that we will come to their defense, and number two is that they have increased defense spending since 2014 by 25 percent, which is the, 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 the fastest or the largest increase in the last 25 years. While Putin uh, pursues a malign activity strategy, uh, President Trump continues to undermine our European uh, allies. Uh, I served in Germany uh, for five years, and I witnessed firsthand how we won the Cold War. But we didn't win it through military power alone. Um, we won because NATO military strength helped create the space for democratic dissidents uh, in Eastern Europe to come together and bring down Soviet rule uh, from within. Uh, we won because of a values-based strategy. The success of America's strategy, which was pursued by presidents from Roosevelt to Kennedy to Reagan, uh, of advancing American values. Uh, with as much passion as uh, President Trump questions our European allies as freeloaders, he similarly seeks to establish a cozy relationship with Putin's Russia. Russia is one of our most aggressive adversaries, working to rupture relationship uh, that we have, particularly in Europe. I have no answers as to why he unlike any Democrat or Republican that preceded him, is so unwilling to defend the interests of the United States or our allies against Russia. All that's clear is that embrace, by embracing our adversaries and denigrating our allies, President Trump is inviting grave and historic consequences for the United States. So I stand here today, along with my colleagues, to call on President Trump uh, to demonstrate global leadership and unequivocally affirm our commitment to our European allies and condemn Russia's aggression uh, and their meddling and malign influences both in our country and abroad. And with that, I'll turn it over to my good friend, Jimmy Panetta. Thanks, thanks. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, thanks to my fellow veterans, uh, fellow members of this United States Congress. Uh, once again, my name is Jimmy Panetta. I stand in front of you as a U.S. representative, as a former prosecutor, and as a veteran. And in all three of those positions, I took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The exact same oath which our president contravened this week. Now, as an intelligence officer, I was deployed to Afghanistan in 07 to 08. I worked for a Joint Special Operations Command where we utilized, we relied on, we needed information from many intelligence services. And although we came from many different backgrounds and different agencies, we knew that we were a part of one fight. And one of the cornerstones of that unity was our oath to service. Now, the president took that oath on January 20th of 2016. But since then, we have accepted a president who we know is not constrained by customs, by norms, or decorum. We know that he likes to act tough with tweets behind closed doors and trash talk at political rallies in front of his supporters. 
But I do not believe that the people will accept a president who is unwilling to get tough with our adversaries. We cannot accept any president who's willing to sell out our intelligence agencies in order to suck up to a leader who has attacked this country and continues to attack other democracies around this world. That is a contravention of it, that oath. And Congress, I believe, must act because I do not believe the president will. Let's pass a resolution condemning the president's remarks that he tried to weasel out of just yesterday. Let's fully implement these sanctions that we passed last, last year. Let's pass harsher sanctions, sanctions, sanctions to punish Russia that if they do it again, let's hit them harder. And let's protect the special counsel. Let's protect the integrity of our elections. Let this U.S. Congress do something. That is how we uphold the credibility of the presidency. That is how we uphold the credibility of this House. And that is how we uphold the credibility of this democracy. Thank you. I thank all my colleagues for joining us today and for their remarks and for their service. And we'll take some questions just now. So how are, are you talking to your Republican counterparts? What are they saying to you? Um, what do you think is realistic in the possibility of getting something done? Well, you've seen uh, quite a few of our Republican colleagues speak out. Uh, sadly, uh, I don't know that any of them have spoken out with the force or with which is needed. And uh, as a couple of uh, the speakers today stated, uh, there's some legislative uh, action that uh, should take place, and it's going to take uh, courage on their part, but uh, they are the majority. They're the majority in the House, the majority in the Senate, uh, and they should bring those measures to the floor. And we're here today. You heard uh, uh, some of the things that we want to see happen. Uh, we want to see Robert Mueller uh, protected. We want to see uh, the appropriate level of funding uh, to uh, protect our elections from uh, any uh, uh, additional uh, uh, raids, uh, invasion by, uh, by Putin. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that uh, this institution of representative government speaks out loudly and is heard as to how reprehensible this president's actions were in Helsinki. Anyone else want to say anything? You did well. You got it. You got it. You knocked the other part. Good job. Hi, my name is Sarah Batani. I'm a reporter for Conquet News, Arizona PBS. And President Trump issued a correction yesterday. Are you guys buying it and why or why not? Well, I think what you heard from all of us is uh, he did a walk back yesterday, and then he did a, a walk back from the walk back today. And uh, I think it's ridiculous uh, as uh, his uh, original statement, and uh, I, I think it's uh, not even close to what he needs to do. Well, look, yeah, the walk back is, is the walk back to the walk back is ridiculous, but it's more of an ongoing problem. We have NATO allies that are trying to make decisions all the time about who they're you know, who can, they, who can they trust? And the fact that this president uh, believes that by just saying, uh, you know, that he, he missed uh, putting the apostrophe in the right area, uh, that he uh, now somehow fixes this massive problem is, is not uh, the solution. The solution is to have long-term engagement with our NATO allies, treat them with the respect that they deserve, continuing to push forward on sanctions on Russia to make sure that they stop their, all their uh, uh, problematic actions they're doing, not just in the United States, but for God's sakes, they just gassed and killed a British citizen uh, two weeks ago, in addition to a couple of months ago, almost gassing a whole, you know, a whole section of, 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 of town over there. They gave uh, uh, anti-aircraft missiles to uh, quote-unquote separatists, which I believe were actually Russian troops themselves, and downed uh, a civilian airliner. This is a bad uh, country. This is a bad uh, uh, leader in Putin. Uh, and we need to have a president that's actually backing it up in words consistently as well as actions. Any other question? Yeah. Well, ahead, so let me just add to that. Um, the president couldn't even do the walk back yesterday correctly. Uh, he put in that, you know, other people could also have uh, influenced our elections. That's not what the intelligence community said. Uh, they very clearly came out and said it was Russia that did this on the orders of Vladimir Putin. And our Department of Justice indicted 12 Russian military officers. They weren't Canadian military officers. 
Recently, they just indicted Maria Butina, who is not a German national. She's a Russian national. So it's very clear that the president could even do his walk back correctly. And today, based on his comments that he doesn't believe Russia is interfering or meddling in our current elections, shows where his uh, true heart lays. And that's why you need Congress to step up and push back. Thank you very much. Thank you.